Okay, so this video is going to continue looking at the um, 2019 May Higher Level Physics Paper 1 uh, Multiple Choice Paper. So this is question 13. It says a glass block of refractive index 1.5 is immersed in a tank filled with a liquid of higher refractive index. Light is instant on the base of the glass block, which is the correct diagram for rays instant in the glass block at an angle greater than the critical angle. All right, so if we have a look at this question here, we can see the last block of refractive index 1.5 is immersed in a tank filled with a liquid of a higher refractive index. So this liquid here has a higher refractive index than the glass block. Since we're moving from the more dense material to the less dense material, we would expect any um, refraction to occur bending away from the normal. And should the angle of instance be greater than the critical angle, we would expect total internal refraction. So because it's total internal reflection, that means all of the incoming light would be reflect, uh, reflected. So that would be this diagram here. In this case, some, angle, some light is refracted and here and here. So the only one where there's total reflection is this one. So the correct answer would be D. All right, this question here says, in an experiment to determine the speed of sound in air, a tube that is open at the top is filled with water and a vibrating tuning fork is held over the tube as the water is released through a valve. Um, increase in intensity of the sound is heard for the first time when the air column length is x. Next increase is heard when the air column length is y. Okay, so this question is about resonance. So we've got the tuning fork here, and it tells us that when the water level drops down to this point here, we're going to get a wave formed. So for that to happen, for a wave to form here, at the open end of the tube there would have to be an anti-node set up with our standing wave and there would be a node set up at the end. So the most simple way that could happen would be if we have one quarter of a wave here, here is an anti-node, here is a node. That would then be a one quarter of the wave cycle. The next possibility to set up would be when it's a bit longer we would have a node down at this end here, again we'd have an anti-node here but we would have in between a node and another anti-node. So our wave would be like that. Right, so in the case of X, what we've got there between a node and an anti-node, our wave would be like that. Um, that would be half of a wavelength. Actually, if I draw that again down here, node, anti-node, node, anti-node, node, anti -node, node, like that, the wave would be like that. So our wavelength, would be there, like that. Now for a quarter of the cycle, that part there, just between node and anti-node, that would be lambda over four, that point there. So x would be, the wavelength would therefore be four times x. So that one is a possibility because lambda over four would be this length here, which corresponds to length x and then therefore lambda would be four lots of x. In the case of y, we've got three quarters of the wavelength. So three quarters of lambda would be equal to y. Okay, because y would be that distance there. So lambda would therefore be four y over three, this one here. So option one would be possible. Option three would be possible. Option four would not be possible because the next one after that would be five um, fourths of a wavelength and that's not gonna work. So the correct answer then is going to be B, one and three only. Okay, next question. It says charge flows through a liquid. The, char um, the charge flow is made up of positive and negative ions. In one second, 0 0.10 coulombs of negative ions flow in the one direction and 0 0.10 coulombs of positive ions flow in the opposite direction. What is the magnitude of the electric current flowing through the liquid? So current is the rate of flow of charge. Now it says that um, this happens in one second. I thought I read that somewhere. Charge flow made of positive ions in one second, yeah, here. So 0 0.1 coulombs flow in one second. So that's a current of 0 0.1 amps. So we've got 0 0.1 amps from the negative ions. And then we've got another 0 0.1 amps from the positive ions. So the total electric current flowing through will be the sum of those two, which would be 0 0.2. So the answer is D. OK, 
Okay, next uh, question. It says two parallel, parallel plates are a distance apart with a potential difference between them. A point charge moves from a negatively charged plate to a positively charged plate. Charge gains kinetic energy W. The distance between the plates is doubled and the potential difference between them is halved. What is the kinetic energy gained by the identical charge moving between these plates? All right, so some equations we might need here is that electric field strength is force divided by charge. Um, also, we should know that electric field strength is voltage divided by distance. Now we can equate those two. So I can say that F over Q is V divided by D. And then I could rearrange that and say that F times D is equal to V times Q. So F force times distance here this force times distance, that's going to be equivalent to work, which is going to be also equivalent to kinetic energy. So therefore, kinetic energy W is going to equal V multiplied by Q. So that is the potential between the plates multiplied by the charge. So it says the distance between the plates is doubled and the potential difference between them is halved. So the distance between the plates is doubled isn't going to have an effect. But halving the potential difference between them, halving V is going to have an effect. So if I make V half the size, I'm going to make W half the size. So therefore, the answer is A. OK. A resistor of resistance R is connected to a fully charged cell of negligible internal resistance. A constant power P is dissipated in the resistor, and the cell discharges in time T. An identical cell is connected in series with two identical resistors, each of resistance R. Um, what is the power dissipated in each resistor and the time taken to discharge the cell? All right, so resistance of resistance R is connected to a fully charged cell, negligible internal resistance. All right, so in the initial situation, we have our cell there, and this is our resistor R. Okay, and power is dissipated, which is P. Okay, then what happens next? Um, identical cell is connected in series with two identical resistance resistors, each with resistance R. Okay, and that's in time T as well for discharge. So in the second situation, we've got a situation like that. And we need to know what is the power compared to the first one in each resistor and what is the time taken for the discharge. So if we look at this one here, if we say that the voltage of this cell is V, this one would also be V. Here we'd have a current of I. In this one, the current would be I over 2 because we've now got double the resistance. Voltage is still the same, so the current through there would be I over 2. Also, the voltage across this cell here would be V, across that resistor there. The voltage across this resistor here would be V over 2, because the voltage from the cell is divided across the two resistors. Therefore, the power in one resistor power is equal to I times V, so it's going to be I over 2 times V over 2, so that's going to be I times V over 4, or one quarter of what it was previously. So that is therefore going to be either A or B. We can discard C or D. Now, additionally, the time taken for the cell to discharge is going to depend on the voltage and on the current. Voltage is the same in both cases. Current here, and the second situation is halved. So because the current is half, it will take twice as long for the cell to discharge. So the correct answer is going to be B. Okay, and last question. So this will be question 18. It says two currents um, of 3 amp and 1 amp are established in the same direction through two parallel straight wires R and S. What is correct about the magnetic forces acting on each wire? Okay, so we've got two wires here and they're going to provide so they're going to produce magnetic field which is going to provide a force of attraction so whenever you have magnetic fields in parallel wires there's an attractive force between them so we can disregard b and d 
And then we should also know from Newton's third law that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So because the forces are causing each uh, caused by the same thing, they are going to have equal magnitude. So the answer is going to be A. Both wires exert equal magnitude attractive forces on each other.